When we talk about covalent bonds, the covalent bonds are characterized by the bond length, sometimes called the bond distance, which is the distance between the two nuclei. And we measure this in all sorts of length units, meters, centimeters, nanometers. Sometimes we use a unique um, measurement. This is the angstrom, spelled A-N-G-S-T-R-O-M, from the German scientist who thought of that. And one angstrom is 1 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. It's a special metric unit, and we use it when we are um, looking at atoms because they're all in that range, in the 10 to the negative 10th meter range. So it's just easier to say two angstroms or six angstroms instead of so many um, picometers or nanometers, whatever. And we also talk about the bond energy, which is the energy released when a bond forms. It may be uh, defined as the energy required to break a bond. So when we're forming covalent bonds, we're trying to do something special. We're trying to bring two atoms together. They each have a positively charged nucleus, and the positively charged nuclei want to repel each other. They also have electrons that are configured around there, and they're all trying to be able to see eight electrons, or however many they want, because some of the elements want different numbers than eight. And in order to make this work, we have to get them close enough that they can see all those electrons. So when we look at this, we can look at the energy increasing on the y-axis. And then we'll look on the x-axis at the distance between the nuclei. So let's start over here. We have two nuclei over here, and they are really far apart. And they're just kind of hanging out, two atoms, and they each have a nucleus. And so they're sort of hanging out, moving around in three-dimensional space, saying, oh, ho hum, I'm an atom, and I don't have as many electrons as a noble gas, and I really wish I did. And they're just sort of walking along. Then all of a sudden, they start to notice that there's somebody nearby that has electrons. And so the energy goes down. They're like, oh, wow, I can see those electrons now. I'm starting to feel those electrons. You get down here, and the energy is very low because we've achieved overlap of the electrons. So each of those atoms can now feel all of those electrons. Then if you start to move closer, all of a sudden the energy just shoots up like this. So this distance where we bottom out, this is... The bond distance. It is the maximum interaction between the electrons and the minimized repulsion of the nuclei. So if you think about this, these electrons are like, oh, here I am. I need electrons. Oh, there's electrons. Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. Get to this bottom. Oh, this is perfect. Let's hook up, bond here. Try to get closer. Get away, get away. You're too close to my nucleus, right? That's what they say. Yeah, they come to me. I hear the voices. <laughs> that explains a lot, doesn't it? So when we have minimized the repulsion and maximized the overlap of electrons is where we form the bond. So that helps us to understand why the nuclei stay a certain distance away. And... That brings us right into Lewis structures, which is what we're going to be focusing on. So tomorrow we will mostly be talking about Lewis structures. Just in case, bring your lab books tomorrow. Bring your lab books and your lecture notes.